Hi everyone, I'm Nancy Lovis, the Entrepreneurship and Business Librarian at the University of North Carolina at Chapel Hill. And thanks for staying tuned in for this presentation on uh, data literacy in 60 minutes, teaching data literacy without a data background. Um, I'm again, returning back to the undergraduate population. And whereas the presentation from our colleagues at Elon was very, um, really great framework for strategies for teaching data literacy in library instruction. This presentation is a very specific lesson plan example of a workshop that I gave in February of 2020. And a little about me, I would like the slide to change. Before the pandemic, I really enjoyed hosting dinner parties and walking with friends. And since the pandemic has started, I turned those dinner parties into socially distanced picnics with very tiny attendee numbers. And I have grown to enjoy walking alone. Um, and then the pandemic isn't over yet, so I'm not sure how things will change after that. So in February 2020, uh, before the world changed, I was invited to facilitate a 60 minute data literacy workshop for 25 undergraduate business students in the Keenan Scholars Program for students in the Keenan Flagler Business School at UNC. This is a selective program and students complete a research project in their final year. As well, data literacy is one of the learning objectives for the program. The workshop description was already written when I was invited to facilitate this workshop. I also was heartily in love with Baby Yoda at the time and was including GIFs and images in all of my presentations to inject some levity into sometimes dull subject matter. As my presentation title indicated, I have minimal formal data training. Um, I, did take a data analytics class in library school, and I have a Bachelor of Arts in Economics, but I have the BA rather than the BS so that I didn't have to take the advanced statistics requirement. The session was advertised with a great title, Stand Out from the Crowd, How Data Literate Are You? Um, the session was essentially advertised to cover every possible aspect of data literacy, knowing how to read data to identify patterns to create new markets, analyze peak, peaks and troughs that lead to game-changing technological breakthroughs. How confident are you in your ability to read, work with, analyze, and argue with data and assess facts? So it does sound really great and exciting. Um, I had some questions. I asked for clarification. Is the vision for the workshop more a focus on interpreting data visualizations or data used in reports? And the answer I got back was essentially cover all the things. So here's what I did. Um, I started by doing some research, which is what librarians do best. I read a 2019 article by Pothier and Condon toward data literacy competencies. This article distills data literacy into seven competencies for business students. I selected two of these, communicating and presenting effectively with data and evaluating the quality of data sources. Even though these competencies are still really broad, they helped me focus my planning. I was still pretty anxious about how I was going to cover all of the things in 60 minutes. So I phoned a friend, uh, my colleague Steve Kramer at UNC Greensboro brainstormed lesson plan ideas with me, as well as introducing me to the junk chart, junk charts blog by Kaiser Fung. Fung is a data analyst who writes blog posts that analyze charts and graphs used in media. His explanations are in really clear language and his topic choices are relevant and interesting. So Junk Charts by Kaiser Fung was my source of content for this workshop. As 
especially since analyzing and critiquing data visualizations is outside, that's outside my primary wheelhouse. And so it was great to have access to this expert content. So I ended up with the learning objectives that students would understand that data literacy has many components and they would spend time in the session practicing uh, to interpret and evaluate uses of data in business media articles. Before I jump into the lesson plan details, here's some of the theory that underlies my teaching practice. Critical pedagogy incorporates a social justice lens into teaching. In the constraints of one-shot sessions and workshops, this can often look like strategically choosing discussion topics or sample database searches. In this particular workshop, we examined the use of data in a Business Insider article about gender wage inequality. You can find more about critical business information literacy in a 2017 article by Stonebreaker et al, which is linked to in my references slide. One key principle of feminist pedagogy is that learners and instructors co-construct knowledge. Incorporating small and large group discussion time into this workshop centered the learners and created space for them to actively participate in their own learning as we together constructed an understanding of data literacy skills. If you're interested in learning more about feminist pedagogy, I really highly recommend Maria Tia Cardi's book, Feminist Pedagogy for Library Instruction. I'm sure what you've all been waiting for the nitty gritty lesson plan. We opened with a Mentimeter poll thinking about how do we define data literacy and why is it important? It felt really important to me to establish a foundational understanding of what we meant when we talked about data literacy. Since as we've heard in these great presentations this week, data means something different to every discipline and even within disciplines. Um, it can be art, it, it can be images, it can be text, it can be spreadsheets. Um, the bulk of the session was then spent on the activity. I budgeted about 35 minutes for this activity. First, students read the Business Insider article called Equal Pay Day Gender Pay Gap Calculator. Not calculator, calendar. This article was one that Kaiser Fung had highlighted on the Junk Charts blog. First, individually, and then in twos and threes, we did a think pair share that analyzed the use of charts and data in this article. Five minutes. Thank you. Um, this Junk Charts trifecta checkup what is the practical question, what does the chart say, and what does the data say, is the framework that Fung uses in his analysis and students used this framework in their analysis. I brought the students back together for a large group discussion. Beforehand, I had given them a heads up to have one person from each group prepared to share to the class. I was personally prepared with some thorough notes that I'd taken from Fung's analysis so I could fill in gaps in the discussion when, this, when the students uh, were sharing their analysis. And finally, we had a minute paper assessment. What did you learn and what question still remains? Was this session a success? I think so. Students responded to the what is the most important thing you learned question with pay gap is more complicated than it seems. Every source makes assumptions and students learned to ask questions about assumptions and how important it is to look into the controls, limitations and variables to understand what data was being used, how it was collected um, and what the purpose of its use in the article was. If you're interested in looking at the resources for this workshop, they're linked to in the slide deck. Um, the slide deck from that I used for the workshop, as well as Fung's articles and the link to the actual Business Insider Equal Pay Day Gender Pay Gap Calendar. 
as well, you can find my site, the articles that I referenced in the pedagogy theory slide. So please feel free to email me, find me on Twitter, um, and also check out the Biz Liberatory blog. It's written and edited by academic business librarians, and we've got some data specific content um, on there in the past year or so. And I'd love to, to chat with you and answer your questions. Thank you so much. I loved that integration of critical and feminist pedagogy into data literacy. All right, so feel free again to pop your questions into the Q&A. We've already got one. If you were to give this workshop again, is there anything you'd change? That's a great question. Would I change anything? Um, I would probably want to just take a look and see if there's other relevant media articles. Um, maybe change up the timing of things. That's a I think for this context, it worked. If it was a different population of students, rather, so if it was a, if it was for a specific class, rather than this kind of um, group of students who are in a co-curricular program, um, I would want, have wanted to make sure that the examples that we were using in class in the workshop related to what the students were learning in class. Okay, next question. Was your session more focused on discussion or hands-on activities? It was focused on discussion of reading the article and kind of and, and analyzing the use of data in the article. So this was not working with a data set and that aspect of data literacy. Um, but the, the small group discussion time was probably 15 to 20 minutes of that 35 minutes. Okay, um, those are all the questions we have. I wanna give people a minute in case they're typing in questions. Um, looks like we might be getting one into the chat. So let me look at that. As a business librarian, are there other ways that you could imagine partnering with data librarians? Absolutely. I'm really fortunate to have a great working relationship with our numeric data librarian at UNC and it would be great to explore what it looks like to provide more instruction on census data literate like census data literacy, for example. Um, I do not primarily work with the business school. Um, my, I have a colleague who's the research librarian for the business school. And so I primarily work with this, this population was kind of uh, out, of, out of the or ordinary for me. Um, I do a lot of work with economic students and finding data. Did the students read the article before class or in class? And do you think that makes a difference? They read the article in class, it was a short, um, web page. It was like a short online article. And so I don't know that students would have read the article beforehand, just given their course loads and ex external commitments. Um, since I was coming in as a guest facilitator without a pre existing relationship with the students, I don't know if it would have worked. But that, especially if you're doing something more in depth, having some pre-work is sometimes works. Okay, we have another question in the chat. Do you get a feel that the group would be interested in a journal club? I'm not really sure what group, not really sure what what group the question person refer the question asker refers to? Um, question asker, can you clarify and you can just go ahead and do it in the chat? She says, okay. Okay, you see. Yeah, that is a great question. Um, I'm not actually sure what, I'm not sure the extent of kind of enrichment activities like that, that the director of the program already coordinates for the students. Um, they are 
really want the they are really wanting to develop a culture of business of research in the undergraduate business program. Um, I'm actually giving another workshop for this same program next month. But instead of data literacy, it's more of like, how, what is business research and how do I get started and pick a topic? Um, so as this relationship develops, it's a thing to explore potentially. Well, we've got three minutes left if anyone has any more questions. I'm not seeing any, but I will give a minute again for people if they're thinking or typing. Mm -hmm. Do you use the term data fluency? I do not. And this is actually the, for my first introduction to that term. Because data literacy is the term used in the official learning objectives for the Keenan Scholars Program, uh, in this case, it was appropriate to use that language. The question asker commented that um, their docs do not care for literacy. Mm -hmm. um, not a question, but a comment in the Q&A, don't sell yourself short. <laughs> Thank you. And um, you can see for yourself in the chat, but um, you're getting lots of compliments, but also people appreciate your integration of the Triforce into <laughs> your slides. Yeah, that's that's all from from Kaiser Fung's blog, just kind of taking that content and adapting it into a way that makes sense for this type of workshop. Okay, we have one minute left. <laughs> I will say that my we would pause every between every, at every transition, we paused to admire the cutest picture of Baby Yoda that I had put into our workshop present, into the slide deck. Um, and the students enjoyed that a lot. So that was culturally relevant in February. I don't know how culturally relevant that still is these days, but I might need to put a fly on my head or something. <laughs> Wow. <laughs> I mean, I haven't even seen The Mandalorian, but I know about Baby Yoda, so I think it's still relevant. I was very sad when Baby Yoda was kicked off Twitter. <laughs> All right, we're at time. Thank you so much for your presentation. Thank you.